Hello folks and welcome or welcome back to the channel and I'm kind of a lucky guy because I was able to take a week's off leave so I don't have to go to work this week but we'll work on the TVR because I want to get it ready to get it on the road. There's still a lot of small things to be done and we're going to show you a couple of those in this video uh, but the overall and the biggest video that is still to come is to install the cooling system and that's going to be a complete separate video. And one of the things we're going to do is to replace the old uprights and you can see how the rubber here is cracked. It's all rusted away, it's really stiff. So I got some new ones and they're gonna go in and they should be exactly the same and I hope they are. They look almost the same so uh, we'll be fitting those very shortly. We'll also have to install the new rubbers or the new silicon holders that are holding the anti-roll bar with new housings and that also arrived this week so I'm quite lucky again. And we need to fix the oil sump plug because that washer here is actually a seal and it's totally bent as you can see so you should replace this every time you change the oil and I have the new ones laying here and you can actually see the difference on thickness. But there is an alternative method as well to this, so whatever you want to use, there are other solutions. And this is another little seal that I have here. It's a solid ring, but with some rubber inside, and these are quite good. In fact, I think these are better than the copper versions. So that's what we need to fix. And we'll need to install a new cover plate here. The one that is in there was kind of flimsy, I don't know exactly what it is, but let me show you what was in there. But I'm going to rebuild this uh, with a new aluminum panel. And this is the original panel that was on it. Pretty weird stuff. It feels like leather or some sort of cardboard, very flimsy. But I'm going to rebuild this uh, with a nice piece of aluminum. And once we're done with all that, we're going to install a new fuel pump. I opted to go for a mechanical fuel pump, exactly the same as the original one. I could have put an electrical fuel pump up, I have them laying around but I'm just going to use the original pump because this looks like pretty good quality. And of course if you install the fuel pump we'll install the carburetor that we have reconditioned in the previous video. We're going to have all new hoses for that for the fuel, new clamps. But we're also going to install new power leads for the spark plugs and we still have to do two other things. I still need to install two push rods uh, for cylinders number four and six for the intake valves because those were bent. I straightened up the old ones. I have to run the engine, but now that they arrived, I will fit them in there. And then it's a little bit more work actually on the cooling system, but that's gonna be a separate video because that's too much to cover in this video. And of course then after all that, we're going to work a bit on the body on the car. I mean, I'm gonna put new door hinges up. These are the new uh, Racetech nice aluminum uh, door hinges because you know, the doors tends to sag a bit on these TVRs. Uh, some interior work, but you'll see all that in the next uh, video or maybe even in this video, it depends a bit how far I can advance. So with any further ado, I'm gonna start now with installing, first of all, the easy part, which is the new plug for the oil sump with the new seal and hopefully that no longer leaks now. To fit the oil sump plug, I have two options. I can go for the traditional copper seal or washer, or I can go for a more modern one, which is a steel one with some rubber inside. So I think I'm gonna go for the rubber based one. That probably will seal it off a little bit better. Let's see. All right, so let's put the plug up and see if this is gonna seal off. But what I noticed is that the top part is um, closer than the bottom part. So that might be the issue. Uh, let's turn it down and see. Yeah, I think that's what the issue is. On the top, the washer hits the, the sump, but on the bottom, I still have a gap right here. So that's what the issue is here. So it doesn't really matter what kind of a washer you're gonna put up or a seal. Uh, we need to straighten this up a bit. better. 
All right, let's check if the oil leak is fixed. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is to cut out a piece of aluminum to create a new panel that goes on the bell housing. So I'm just going to trace it. And we will cut it. Oops. All right. Well, these holes we'll see later. Uh, these are little plastic taps that go in there. And these, I don't know, these are probably cutouts for bolts that are holding the sump. So let's see if we can cut this. So let's just have a look if it's properly aligned. Yep, that should be it. And now we can cut it. So let's cut it again in the right angle. Always use this little light to see where the line is. So here's our panel. So to install the panel, I'm going to use M5 steel bolts with some big washers, as you can see. Uh, I'm not going to use plastic taps. I could use those. Those are quite handy, uh, but I don't think I will use it in that place. The original panel that was on there, and I don't even know if it was original, was actually with plastic plugs, but I'm going to do it with bolts. And these are M5 bolts, more than good enough. So let's peel off the protective layer and then we can actually go and install the panel. So let's see if this will fit. I think it will. Oops, that wasn't very smart to drop the screw. All right, there we go. Oh, that looks good. Well, I think the panel we mounted looks a lot better than what we had on it before. So now it's time to start working on the anti-roll bar. So for the anti-roll bar, we're going to replace the rubbers, and this is the new rubber that will go in there together with the new housing, uh, because that's really a bit worn out. The rubber is really used. And of course, we'll have to fit at the ends the new downlinks, and here is that downlink, so that's gonna go over there. Uh, and that's just a matter of unbolting a few nuts, but these are very hard to get at. There's two nuts there and then two nuts over here. And once those are removed, I can actually take out this uh, anti-roll bar. So let's see if we can undo these bolts here. And it's a bit of an annoyance to do it, but that's the only way you can do it. So this is going to take a bit of time. And here we have the old bush and the new bush. And you can see the difference. Uh, this one has really been worn out. So this is the old upright. And if I put that in, I have a bit of play. Not a lot, but a little bit. If I put the new upright in, look on how that play. And that's because the threaded rod is about a millimeter sh uh, thinner than the original one. So now we have another issue. So now we will have to uh, create a little bush that goes inside. So we get rid of that play. These are the downlinks from Racetech. You would expect that would be some quality. And if you look at that, that's about 10 mil. Now I do the same on my originals. And 
move that aside. Oh, well, let's say 12, right? Yeah, these are about 12 mil. That's quite a difference. So you would expect that Racetech would know better, but it seems like they're selling a lot of crap, to be very honest, and it's not the only part I have an issue with. Normally, I never say anything about companies in my videos, but in this case, I've had now several parts and I had to wait for weeks and weeks in a row for some bogus reasons and I find out the parts that I get from Racetech are really low quality. I wouldn't ever, ever, ever buy there again. If I compare this to the part that was on there, it's a huge difference. And that's not the only part. I also had a swirl pot from them, and you'll see that later, which was missing parts on them. It's really dreadful. Uh, so, sorry guys, if I pick on Racetech, but it's a fact of life. Uh, they don't deliver good quality stuff for the TVR. So you might as well almost make your own. All right, so nevertheless, now I need to fix it and I'm gonna make some bushes for it. So I'm gonna turn some small bushes so we can fit it in between so we don't have that play. So let's see what we got. 12.23. So the bush is now ready. I just need to cut it in the right length and it's about ready now to be fitted on the downlinks and that should fix that issue. Okay, and here is the little bush that we have turned. So I'm just gonna put some copper grease up uh, and I will put that in and it should just be fitting just fine. I placed the bush all the way onto the bolt. So now that should go in smoothly. See, now we barely have any play, so which is a lot better than what it was before. And it's all this kind of work that always delays the rebuild of this TVR. There's always something to do. And I always try to put a bit of copper crease up. That always helps for the future if I ever have to take it apart again. So now we'll tighten that up. So I'm going to prepare the rubbers for the anti-roll bar and for that I'm going to use some Superflex grease specifically for polyterrain bushes. So let's try if we can squeeze that in there. One. I want to move it all the way through it. That's number one, and now we grease in number two. There we go, greased up. So now that we have the bushes nicely looped, we're going to put them onto the anti-roll bar so we can actually install it onto the car. So let's see if we can get this more or less in place. Let's see if we can get this first pole on. That's the most difficult part, the first bolt. Once you got that on, it's hanging on it, so then it's going to go a lot smoother. Let me just get the second bolt up. Okay, so let's see if we can get this guy in. Sometimes I do drop them, believe me, guys. So that looks uh, quite all right. Um, I know it's still very loose, but I'm going to connect the droplings first. So um, 
I don't have to twist it too hard afterwards. So when everything is kind of connected, then we'll tighten them down. We got them already installed, so that's the good thing. Uh, Uh, this is a bit difficult now. I'm not sure how I'm going to get. All right, to put my glasses on so that I can see what I do. All right, this one goes in quite easily. Now let's look on the other side. So let's see if we can get this guy in. So now that the drop downs are in, I can now bolt down the uh, bushes here uh, on the left and on the right, and then we should be good to go. Clean it up a bit. And now we can do the other side. It's time for a cup of coffee because it's getting bloody cold outside. Anyway, as what you could see so far is that we haven't done a hell of a lot today. I was hoping to get much further, but this is always the problem with old cars. You always run into issues that you don't expect. You know, like the small bushes we had to make for the uplinks, because the uplinks that I got were aftermarket uh, uplinks. They were not the original ones, and they were smaller, so you know you had too much play on it, so you need to adjust it. The same thing happened with the actual tap on the oil pan. That was bent, so we had to straighten that up. So there's always something going on on an old car, but that's just all the fun. So now we're going to do something else. Now I'm going to fix the push rods on cylinder number four and cylinder number six. And maybe you remember it from the previous video while we were working on changing actually the uh, seals on the valves that we found out two bent uh, push rods and this is a push rod right here. So I have two new ones that arrived yesterday so now I can put them in. I actually straightened up the ones that are inside but of course you don't want to keep that in there. You want to replace it with a straight one. Um, it's kind of funny that it's only on cylinder number four and cylinder number six and it's twice the intake valve. Nevertheless, the cylinders have good compression, so um, I'm quite happy with that. Maybe it's old damage and they never replaced it, but I'm going to replace them anyway. And I already checked that the oil channel is actually clean, so that's something you always need to check, even on new ones. So I'm going to take the valve cover off and then we're going to remove everything. I'm going to show you real quick how that is. Uh, the way to do this is very simple. Uh, we're going to turn the crankshaft so that the cylinder we're working on is going to be atop that center for, at the end of its compression stroke. So both valves will be closed. That's important. And we're going to keep the engine in that position. Then we're going to take the rocker off. There's one bolt to take off and then we can remove actually the push rod and put the new one in. We put the bolt back on, we put the, the rocker back on and then we're going to adjust the play or the valve clearance on that specific inlet valve which I believe is 32 millimeters or I think it's 20 thou. But okay, uh, we'll see that in a few seconds. So uh, I'm going to finish up my coffee now and then we continue. So let's take the valve cover off and then we can have a check. All right, and here we go for the last one. And we're going to hold the cover a bit so it doesn't fall off. There we go. It was a bit stuck on it, so... That's the push rod we need to replace. So I'm going to rotate the engine now until cylinder number four is really atop that center at the end of the compression. So let me rotate this because I don't know where I am. All right, keep an eye on these valves, right? So now the exhaust goes open, so meaning that we the piston is coming up. The piston is at the top. Now the piston is going down because the inlet valve goes open. Keep turning. Inlet valve closes, so now we should be getting near to top that center at the end of the compression strokes. I'm going to use a screwdriver in the spark plug hole and sense if I feel the piston coming up or not. Yeah, there it is. I can feel it. What's the screwdriver? See how it comes up? 
I'm gonna check it until it's completely atop that center. All right, a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So we should be now atop that center of cylinder number four. And these valves should have now both the play. So the one I'm gonna replace is this one. So I have to undo this nut. Make sure the engine doesn't move anymore now because that's gonna be a reference. So I'm just gonna undo this nut. And these are self-locking nuts, so it makes it easy to adjust the valves. Now, well, if it's far enough, I can turn it on the side. And here comes the old bent push rod. You can actually see it because I straightened it up a bit. So um, let us compare now this one with the new one. That's the old push rod, and you can see the dent here. That's why I tried to straighten it up before. These are the two new ones, and let's see if they are the same length. Because that's something I learned over all these years that you never know what you're gonna get. So this is um, 148. So let me move this aside. This is the new one. And that's, well, 148, so I'm good. Right, so here is the new push rod. So I'm just going to oil it in a little bit, like so. And let's see if we can fit it properly. There we go. That goes in nicely. Just oil it. This is just engine oil. And now we can put the rocker back, like so. And then tighten that up. And of course now we need to adjust the valve clearance, right? Make sure it's really fitting in the pocket because otherwise that wouldn't be correct and you won't run into an issue. I'm getting pretty close. And now we need to get my gauge and check how much play I have. So we're going to adjust the inlet valve to 0.3 millimeters or 12 thou. Um, and for that one I'm using this gauge and you probably can see that uh, it's a 0.3. So I'm going to now open that up a bit. Make sure that the engine didn't move, okay? Because otherwise that will not be correct. All right, so I'm just sent feeling how, and I'm turning it very slowly. It still feels good. Well, I'm getting there. You want to turn it until you have a slight resistance. Sometimes it's just a little bit, uh, a little bit more. Yeah, I think this is about right. Now I'm going to turn the engine a couple of turns until I've done one full cycle and I'm going to check that evolve, see how that is working. So exhaust, intake, and now we come back up to compression. And we have compression now. We have now exhaust. And now we should be coming back to intake. And now I'm gonna check, because I've done almost twice a rotation now. And we're going to check again uh, if the clearance is good. I need my little screwdriver here to check for top that center. Maybe we might have passed it already. No, we didn't. So. It's coming up, it's coming up, it's coming up. All right, that's good. So let's see. We are at top that center and let's check the play. Well, it's a bit loose. I think I can give it a little bit, a little bit more. All right, so let's check it out. Just a little bit. Yeah, that's enough. All right, and that's it. So the next thing up is to install the carburetor. And that's the one that we have reconditioned and rebuilt. And you can check this out in the previous videos on the TVR. So uh, let's get going on this. So we have cleaned up the base of the carburetor. And that's important that everything is very clean. So we're gonna put up the first seal. Now the seal that you put up on the bottom is the one that is closed in the middle. That's important. So don't put a seal up which is open in the middle. You have to have that separation. 
The next thing that goes in is the W plate, and here is that W plate. Now, the W plate is a special arrangement for this uh, Ford V6, and it's there to assure that the mixture is nicely distributed between the left and the right bank of cylinders. So that's going in like this with the W facing downwards. And on top of the W plate, uh, we're putting the normal seals up or the gaskets. Now these gaskets are the open type, you know, it's fully open. That's important. Keep that in mind. You need to have that open gasket there. And I'm actually going to put two up. Uh, that's a bit safer. Oops, that didn't go too well. My mistake. I shouldn't have pushed it down all the way from the start. Here we go. And that looks pretty good. Uh, this is the intake that is going to go to the PCV valve, which we still have to make the special hose for. So now let's install the carp on top of that. All right, so let's see if we can get it fitted. There we go. And all we need to do now is to bolt it down and then we can start connecting all the other parts. I'm going to put up the air filter just that I don't get no garbage inside the carburetor, although I will have to change it out to a new cartridge because that one has been used, although we have washed it out, but it may not be clean enough. Uh, but at least for now, uh, I'm not going to get any garbage or debris inside the carburetor because I don't want to have anything falling into it. And once we get the new filter, we'll uh, put the new filter up. It's on order, but it's going to take a while before we get it. All right, so uh, we're going to bolt down the carburetor now. And once that's done, we um, will hook up some hoses and the linkage. But for that one, I might do a little bit of extra work because the linkage is having a bit of an issue. Like everything else on this car. So if you watched on the previous episode on how we were fitting these new alloy covers, you've seen on how we made an opening here in the cover to fit the PCV valve. And we need to get this valve back to this hose here. And that's where it used to be before the PCV valve. So now I'm going to use a piece of um, tubing here, uh, which is uh, silicon tubing. And hopefully I can actually cut this over here and then turn it and then connect the two together. I think that's what I'm gonna to try to do and, and that probably will work out just fine. So let me cut this first and then see how we can connect it. So let's see if we can cut this guy as straight as possible. There we go. So I'm gonna put the connection tube in and also on the other side and then we can go actually to the PCV valve. So let me try to do that. So I have already connected the corner with these little connection tubes and I had to do it a bit off, off camera because I had to push it with my hands and you wouldn't be seeing it anyway, but just pushing it in. So now I need to put some clamps up to hold that in place. Put the hose back together and we twisted it. So now let's see if we fit it, how that will look like. Okay, that's on. So now I can turn this. I didn't tighten it down yet. And now, you know, we can go actually to that hose there. So let us uh, measure and see how we get there now. I still want to have it this high up because that's kind of important. If we do it like this, will just be long enough and I'm going to start by cutting it and I'm going to start cutting this hose a little bit longer than it really is necessary but that will give me some safety so let me put this hose up on the PCV valve all the way down lift this one up and then see um, and I think well that's about it I think I probably can take off 
uh, about another two centimeters and we should be good. That's just going to fit fine. I know there's a lot of connectors on it, but hey, what can I say? Uh, this looks quite good. So I'm going to keep it like this and it looks like it's fairly flat as well. So uh, that's good. And before we assemble all this, we're going to use a new PCV valve. Uh, this is the old one. And here we go with a brand new original Ford genuine PCV valve. So let's see if we can put this together now. Uh, okay, so that goes on there. And yeah, that's good. Now we can fit the PCV valve and connect the two together. All right, so now it's a matter of aligning it a bit. And I think this looks good. I think this is how it will be. A good connection. I know there's a lot of clamps on it. That's about all I could do. If I can ever get a hose like this with this form or I can bend one like this, then I will. But for right now, that's what it is. 